And it was always GM that you wanted. Yeah, I never, I never even thought about working someplace else. And it was always GM. If I would not have been accepted by GM, I probably would have gone into fashion design. And, uh, but I think the professors at Howard were as excited, maybe more excited than me when I was accepted into that internship program. Because it was not only was I going to GM, but I was representing Howard University, and they were pretty fired up about that. So you're an intern, and then the, the next year after your internship, you're the first African-American hired to design GM vehicles. Incredible. What did that it's, mean to you? It's, it, had, it had to be monumental. I think, I, think I uh, initially I was just so excited to walk, it, walk through the doors of General Motors design you know, I'd been on this mission since childhood. You know, it was, I was eight years old when I said, that's where I wanted to work. And so I wasn't thinking about being the first, uh, but it wasn't long after I started that I realized that I was in many ways representing more than just myself. Um, that what I did, how I performed, how I carried myself every detail of me in some ways was being watched and and I was representing more than myself. Imagine you looked around the design studio and there weren't many folks who looked like you at that time. Well, there weren't any. And, uh, you know, there were a couple people in the shops. There was a guy, Jim Propina, who, who he just, he was a person who would just bring clay into the studios he was a more material handler and, and got to know him fairly well but uh yeah there was no one in the studios of color 